If you trust the Tesla community, we now have the best electric car in the world right here behind us. Yes? So many people say that, right? Wow. And personally, I can already imagine that many attributes of the absolutely brand new Tesla Model 3 Highland are genuinely among the very best in terms of value for money that you can possibly buy on the market today. Do you think? We want to discover that together with you all today. We have two videos planned. Today, the first thing is where we show you the car from the outside, from the inside, and go on the big test drive to see if Tesla has fixed the weaknesses of its predecessor with the Highland. And then in a second video, we want to take you on the highway here on the A9 and do a consumption run with a charging check at Ionity to see if it can really charge quickly. Before we start, please check if you're part of your tri-electric community. If not, please support us with a subscription and then you won't miss the second part with the consumption drive in a separate video. Let's kick off with the brand new Tesla Model 3 Highland. And as always, we'll start from the outside, starting from the front. But before we get started, Stefan, the old Tesla Model 3 was already a very, very ambitious electric car. Yes, and also mostly sold, I think. Exactly. Peak efficiency, best-selling proprietary supercharger network, and prices that many, many manufacturers struggle to match, offering such a comprehensive car for relatively little money compared to what one might expect from the competition. And to top that off now, to really take it up another notch, Tesla wants to achieve that significantly with the Model 3 Highland. We have him right here, and he initially made a series of some visual changes to enhance the overall design. That was good because I believe the Tesla Model 3 has been available here in Germany since the end of 2018. So after six years, a bit of model refinement, I think, is quite sensible. There were always continuous updates with double glazing, and, and, and but purely visually, I think it turned out extremely well. And Tesla wasn't just about the looks. Elon Musk was also primarily focused on efficiency. They worked on the aerodynamics. They've optimized the headlights again and now have matrix over the air too. Incorporate into the Model 3, which probably causes a bit of grumbling among the X and S drivers, right? Yes, there are those internal battles again. Pay more than double and drive with LED headlights. <laughs> Visually, I find it very, very well done. The whole car looks much nicer, wider and flatter as a result. And here we have the standard range, which means we have rear wheel drive. We have the base model, which currently starts well under 41,000 euros. Then hubcaps are installed, but you can take them off. Underneath, there are fairly stylish alloy wheels. And of course, in the aftermarket, you can get all sorts of variants with 19, 20, I think 21 inches. I've seen that already. You get lowering kits, you get different suspensions because a lot of people criticize the suspension on the old Model 3, Stefan. Yeah, that one was quite a bit tougher. And here at Highland, we want to optimize that too. We want to find that out with you. By the way, visual highlight, this is like from the neighbor's grandpa. So this right here, what exactly is it really? Yeah. yeah. That's like a mud flap, a splash guard. My neighbor used to have that on his Skoda too. Oh, that's so 80s, 90s chic, right? Yeah, yeah but that's, that's not dying out. Well, I guess if you don't like it, you could probably take it down in a pinch. That surely protects against dirt and grime, shielding the bodywork from various elements and possible damage over time. Yes, just like with the facelift of the old Model 3s, we now also have black handles here, black glossy. And I have to say, I went around one more time Tesla has really stepped up their game significantly in terms of their overall build quality, which is quite impressive. And right here with white metallic, it's always been a reliable color. I had it back then on my Tesla Model S Performance Raven as well. This is well made. We didn't find any paint drips or anything. That's truly chic, honestly. Yes, I believe the newly designed LED taillights in comparison to the predecessor are undeniably really chic and stylish. Yeah, it used to remind you a bit of Daihatsu. That's gone now too, right, Stefan? Well, they didn't renew the old contract. And the Tesla logo has also disappeared. Now it just says Tesla. So for everyone who doesn't know how to spell it, T-E-S-L-A, right? Can you still... Well, that's the trademark of Tesla. Oh, I see. By the way, we don't have all wheel drive. We have the rear wheel drive. And what I like the most is this rear diffuser. It somehow looks really high performance. That looks stylish for sure. It fits. And overall, of course, the drag coefficient has really improved. With the new model further improved, the only drawback for me is, like with the Model Y, I think they did it just right, giving it tinted windows in the back. Yes. That could really have been quite nice here too. Everything here has that clear glass look. It's somehow all so bright and already really light. Well, 
Let's delve deeper into the technical details and thus address the length. The Tesla Model 3 Highland is 4.72 meters long, 1.84 meters wide plus side mirrors. We're at 2.09 meters. It fits in the left lane at 2.10 meters in the construction area. Our height is 1.44 meters. That is truly limousine-like, sleek, smooth and flat. And I find that remarkably appealing and attractive. 2.87 meters is the wheelbase. And with the standard range we have here, 60 kilowatt hours gross, 57.5 kilowatt hours net usable, chargeable back here through the port, ensuring optimal vehicle performance. So. Here we have AC alternating current, three phase 11 kilowatt hour and DC CCS, where we have up to 170 kilowatt at peak. We'll probably come across like that a bit, Stefan, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Well, overall, we've got a beast here, 1.8 tons, and a bit is the curb weight for the standard range, relatively light for an electric car, so it should maintain that go-kart feeling, right? Plus, it's extremely fun to drive, offering responsive handling. Well, hopefully it will be quite thrilling to see the Tesla Model 3 is a fully electric advanced vehicle offering outstanding performance. We can see this, for example, in how Tesla optimally utilizes the space inside the vehicle and very, very nicely has installed not only the first aid kit and warning triangle, but also a very extremely nice large trunk with an impressive 88 liters of volume where significantly more than just charging equipment easily fits. I've seen that there are even aftermarket cooling compartments that you can can integrate to have a fridge with you. So there are possibilities. Feel free to be surprised even with electric hood fans. Especially with Tesla, I believe there are more aftermarket accessories than with any other electric car. Yeah, right, they were certainly among the first to actually arrive on time, which isn't surprising. What they really get right are range hoods, we always say that. And so I think it's a pretty cool story when you're driving a Tesla and have a bit of extra storage in the front. And it also makes perfect use of the space. For that, it's definitely a clear and well-deserved hats off. Considerably more interesting than the frunk for many is the trunk. And there we have already from the model update, the power operated tailgate. And that might be the only thing that bothers some people about the Model 3 is that it doesn't have a hatchback. It's basically just a sedan, not a hatchback, which limits its cargo capabilities. But where we have 594 liters of storage space, that's really decent. And here, everything is beautifully carpeted. Look, right up to the loading edge with no gaps. I have to say, Elon Musk and Tesla focus much more on exceptional quality craftsmanship and detail. And then we have a massive compartment back here where you can fit all sorts of stuff from large suitcases to smaller items. So you have to say, Tesla genuinely makes use of every bit of available space to let the user comfortably and securely transport their materials and belongings. Yeah, if that's not enough, you also have the option to fold down the seats, providing extra room for larger items and added convenience. Maybe the only thing missing here is the through loading option. That's really nice for skis or long items. But in any case, we can fold down 60% of the bike side here. And then of course, there's the 40% of the passenger side. So you could probably increase the 594 liters to over 1000 liters. But since we couldn't find the exact details on it, it's hard to be certain. So let me just take an educated guess here. Works closed since it opens electrically. Very good. That wasn't the case initially. I think it's absolutely wonderful that it was retrofitted because it's simply an excellent comfort feature for everyone. What I haven't found is information on the roof load. So I'm not sure if a roof rack is possible or not. Feel free to write it in the comments. I'm sure you all have collective wisdom. What is always possible and recommended for many is an optional tow hitch. It has a 55 kilogram tongue weight. That's unfortunate. I will prefer 75 because many of you might also use a bike rack with an electric bike. Braked, we have a towing capacity of a ton and unbraked 750 kilos, which is more at the lower end than the upper, correct, Stefan? Would you agree with that assessment? Well, I'd say it'll still do for the garden fits. And especially if you want to tow a caravan or a horse trailer or a small sports boat, no, then the you'll thing. definitely need at least one and a half to two or two and a half tons of towing capacity. No. Outside, we've shown you everything. Let's head inside. Of course, we have double glazing on board. In the previous model, it ended with two discs and a film connected. And the main upgrade was here in the Highlands interior, where you can say, yes, it's noticeable and improves performance significantly, enhancing the overall user experience. Relied on the community, listened, and found many things the Tesla driver wishes for are now in the Highland model, 
incorporating various advanced features and improvements. That means it's slightly under padded here on top. It could have been a bit stronger for all the elbow riders who rest their elbows up there. Then we have thoughtfully integrated the very, very beautiful, elegant and striking ambient lighting here and put a nice fabric strip underneath it. It kind of reminds me a bit of the couch, Stefan. Yeah, my couch cushion covers, they appear almost exactly the same. Yeah, nice and soft. Then we have faux leather here. Tesla exclusively uses vegan interiors. Then here are the window switches and the emergency release because opening is done by pressing a button. And then we have a nice door pocket down here, properly lined with thick carpet. I really like that. No rustle here at all. You will notice it. I am completely satisfied and a large bottle fits in here too. So I have to say, Tesla hats off. Welcome to the new interior of the Tesla Model 3 Highland. And here too, I think Tesla has indeed made some particularly and specifically good changes overall. On the one hand, a continuous LED light strip, which then extends into the doors. We already talked about that. On the other hand, you have this wooden application or the one covered with white artificial limbs. Now also upholstered with the fabric selection from Stefan's living room couch, right? <laughs> yeah, good What is still missing for me is a head up display. Why? Because they are omitting a driver functions display. By the way, they made a new steering wheel. I think it's really cool, nice and compact. But unfortunately, they decided to remove the turn signal lever and the gear selector. What I don't like that much is that you basically have two buttons for the indicator here, especially when you turn the steering wheel back and forth, such as in a roundabout or something. You really need to know exactly where the indicator is. That's why I created an edge here again. Experienced Tesla drivers, I asked, said it wouldn't be a problem. For me, it was indeed definitely a hardcore adjustment. I can honestly whisper that to you, my friend. Yes, otherwise, here we have the classic horn button. I like it. I think at first, I believe it was in the Model S, just such a button. Many people complained. Tesla immediately corrected it and made this plastic insert here. We'll take another look at that in the center console. In a moment, I must say, I find everything good. It works great with the rotary knobs as well. I think Tesla's software is generally very, very good anyway. Yes, there we have the large function display. Here I would have wished in the new generation that you could also tilt it towards the driver or to some extent towards the passenger without having to can't see the speedometer and has basically integrated the gear selector into the display here. It's very well made. There's probably an automatic mode too. I haven't tried it yet. We have a nice rear view camera. Let's test it right away. So from that point of view, I must say I like everything. This all builds up incredibly and super quickly here. You can obviously see it. Tesla is absolutely insane. Even when he goes through the various menus here. Now click, 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 click. And then with just one single click, everything changes. You have in my opinion, one of the best navigation systems almost on par with Google Maps. Standards, where you naturally have a corresponding charging plan, primarily with superchargers. I might find that just a tiny bit unfortunate. And what's new now is cooling here as well. Let's turn that on right now. This means you have, as standard in the Tesla Model 3, not only seat heating on all five seats, but also a corresponding seat ventilation system on the driver and passenger sides. Many have wished for this, and I have to say it's a really awesome feature. Yes, then we kept the inductive charging surfaces here, nicely set in with some faux leather, and we have endless storage space here. And I find that very well done here with a large compartment that goes deep down where there's also a 12 volt socket. I think there were, also, USB-C ports, Stefan, I can't find them. I only found one as well, too, back here in the flap, even. Oh, right, that's kind of missing here. Two more USB-C yeah. ports. But I don't want to say anything out of line. I mean, not that I'm overlooking something significant here, but I can't find any. No view from behind. I must say, what's really cool is everything is nicely lined with felt. Nothing rattles or rustles. And then we have here, very, very nice. Once again, a large storage compartment that goes deep inside where our draggy is, because later we want to measure if the Tesla really accelerates from zero to 100 in 6.1 seconds. And of course, in the consumption test video with the charging check, we'll also test if it really reaches 200 top speed. And how far the autopilot goes, and I believe also the adaptive cruise control, because there are again changes in the maximum speed. Well, hopefully for the better, for us. I don't know. A glance through the side gives you another little glimpse into the interior. And I have to say, Tesla did a pretty good job there as well. The only thing you have to look for again is, I believe, the glove compartment. Do you know where, Stefan? Mm -hmm. Not right away. You know, that is also kind of where I always think, there it definitely is without that any is doubt. 
it's all ah. quite nice that you open the glove compartment with a button press and save the button. But if you don't drive the car daily, then you don't know where it is. That's definitely nice that he has it. And what I find even nicer are the seats. So with the perforation, with the seat ventilation, seat heating, they are nicely padded here in the lumbar area. I also find in the thigh area, is that decent? There's always room for more. They're also nice and long, so they're great for tall people too. We have a sturdy shoulder support, and here we have an integrated headrest. So the seats, they've definitely, I think, gotten a step better. Yes, that's right. They are really good. What I would have liked, maybe a black roof liner, right? Yeah, or at least something like a blind or something. Yeah, Rollo is a completely different and separate topic entirely, Stefan. You're one step ahead of me once again, as usual. We have a large glass roof here, which is divided in the middle and isn't continuous because the rear window extends all the way down to the lid. That's quite a large glass surface area. Stefan rightly points out that a shade or dimming option is noticeably missing here. Yeah, wait, Especially in summer, summer, when the sun is beating down. I can already feel as the sun comes out mm. how this acts like a hot plate from above and my head is getting warm here. Yeah. Well, that's not nice. That wasn't so nice in my Tesla Model S either. By the way, those thin flimsy floor mats also don't work. I already replaced them back then. This is really kind of a bit stupid. They're just held here with this tiny bit of Velcro. And when you get in and out with your feet, they slide quite easily, especially here on the driver's side. I find it suboptimal too. What's brilliant? Look, Stefan, everything here is lined with this carpet felt. I have to say, many manufacturers tend to go for hard plastic, but Tessa goes the extra mile and puts in the extra effort. They did a good job, yes. They should have just pulled him up here. Yeah, just a bit further so the strap doesn't rattle. Mm. Well, it's still going. Oh, that's soft. Well, look. Oh, look, it's soft and it foams. See, we were about to complain from the wrong end again. Application error, right? As always, don't just criticize, first check it out. Dr. Bum. Let's take a look at the rear. I'm 1.85 meters tall, a light 99.9 .9 kilos. Look, Stefan, here are also two panes connected with a film. Yeah, that's pretty neat. They used to do it only in front and now they do it in front and back. Yeah, you see. Move forward as usual, like you always do. And here, because the car is a bit lower and has a very coupe-like line, you should always be a bit cautious when getting in so you don't accidentally bump your head against the roof. I'll tell you, Stefan, the Tesla development team... Yeah, she's got it. Nah, it looks electric, because I criticize most new electric cars for the third headrest and reduced armrest. These small design choices often leave me unimpressed, don't you think? Absolutely. Does it even have a center mm. armrest? Yes, and it's extended fully across cool. the entire seat. And that's really quite awesome. Please take I'll a look at how I have it here. Here are the cup holders. I can comfortably sit here with my 6-1... It's really not usual for me to always have my elbow in the cup holder. That's really well done. As if they were listening to us and paying attention. Right. And what I notice is that because you have the headrest up and the seat slopes a bit, you have a natural bridge in front, so you don't have to worry about bending or breaking it. Yeah, that's See? awesome. A highlight would be, since you're watching Tesla, a pass-through option for skis or a long object. A hole well, is well, clearly well. missing. Yes, otherwise we have the classic Isofix mount driver passenger side. We also have the perforation here at the back. As far as I know though, we don't have seat ventilation back here. No, we only have seat heating. Look, then on the driver and passenger side. And if I see this correctly, we don't have heating in the middle with the standard range either. I don't know if that's only possible with the dual motor. We definitely have the premium package, FSD, everything on board. Yeah, the highlight is Stefan, where did you go with the camera? I'll come back again. Exactly, this little display here, which isn't that small, can provide good entertainment by allowing access to YouTube and other things, for example, making it perfect for those who value convenience. I think it's really awesome, right? Twitch um, and all those things. Good, yeah. So from that standpoint, it's really great. Yes, he does well. Yes, by the way, there are also two USB-C ports here. Here's a vent where air blows out, which you can control through the display. So I have to say it's nicely done back here. Absolutely. The only thing we have here is just a bit of harder plastic, but it looks kind of leathery. Maybe I can live with that. Perhaps it could be just a little bit cushioned and like include pockets here where you can conveniently tuck in a tablet or a newspaper or even a smartphone or a phone charger easily. Yes. And look, Stefan, unlike the ID series, here we have full rear paneling, plus again with your living room couch fabric and everything is lined with gorgeous plush carpet, creating a cozy and charming atmosphere. I have to yeah. say, there's really not much to criticize in terms of build quality, is there? Absolutely not. I have more, Stefan. 
So what's wrong? Missing handrails here, right? Yeah, true. Exactly, the fear. Though coat hooks, but like, I don't even know. Why do they actually save on coat hooks? Do you know that? So these handles where you can securely hold on, outside we showed you everything and inside we showed you absolutely everything that we could show you. Come on in. We're going for a test drive to review the car's performance and ensure everything works. Test the Model 3 thoroughly. For you, it's crucial to ensure a tight turning circle, especially in a congested urban environment with limited space. So, there are the 472 mids cars. Stefan, 1170 mids. We've got 38.39 feet. And that's actually quite decent, and this way I can get around Stefan pretty well and efficiently. Don't you think? Yeah, that looks quick. Yes. Whoa, it's squeaking. Even more crucial in the bustling city than the turning circle is the capability to properly and efficiently park your Tesla Model 3, ensuring you navigate tight spaces with ease. I think this is really cool here. You really don't need to do anything manually with the driving modes, right? No, he's doing it well. But the guidelines... That's sort of quite a bit sparse. Right? Yeah, they always do work until it really counts in the end, right? Yeah, and if so, just one more meter, right? Well, I mean, Tesla unfortunately changed that. We don't have ultrasonic sensors anymore. So if you look here now, we are really just one millimeter away from the other one. So you <coughs> seem like this? Very sporty, definitely. Well, one advantage is there's no more jingling and jangling. He's now showing everything in red. And you see, with this vision only thing, he somehow detects the other vehicles. But I have to say, back then, you know? <laughs> but back then with the Model 3, it even showed centimeters with the sensors. Yeah, richtig, richtig, richtig. That was actually better, right? Well, that's kind of a step backward now. <laughs> I don't know. Here in Linte, we have a nice mogul field, and here we can test the suspension best, right? Here are some nice bumps. Yes? Nobody knows exactly why they're here, actually. We are in the industrial area now, but now they are really flopping around nicely here. He's doing a good job, huh? Yeah? He handles it well, actually. Smooth, comfortable, nothing rocks here. He goes nicely over the transverse joint here too. Well, I must say this is truly a stable chassis. Uh, this is really fun. Here in the Highlands, when I think of the old one, we would have been bouncing around like a go-kart yeah, driver. Then the discs would have been yeah. in danger again here. The only thing I can't get used to here is the indicator. But even with the short turning radius, here we nicely whip around over the bump. So he's doing it properly. Nothing rattles here, nothing hisses here. We don't need any cobblestones, do we? No, we don't need to look for that here today. But I have to say, Highland suspension. There's really nothing left to criticize, is there? Where the Tesla belongs, I think, is on the country road, right? Yes, he does. That blend of the sporty chassis from the past and the present comfort really comes through well, don't you think? It's remarkable how they've merged nostalgic performance with modern comfort. Absolutely, yes. The only thing that bothers me a bit, I think, is this constant jingling and jangling. We usually know that more from Asian cars. Well, yeah, but you have to find something to discuss, honestly. But those are surely all user errors, and you can also turn that off. <laughs> yeah, by driving reasonably, you mean? Or because you can press the button? Probably both. We started the draggy. Stefan, look, I reset it, and we want to do a launch control Zero to 100, although I don't think it has a launch control. No, I don't think so either. Three, two, one, go. And now we go 20, 50, 80, 100. Yeah, exactly 6.1 seconds. And that's the factory specification sheet for sure. Okay, we'll pull over here to the right and find out precisely what exactly the Tesla did so we can understand it better. Somehow, I kind of feel it's just a feeling since we don't drive Tesla every day, but it seems like it's lost a little bit of its punch, don't you think? Yeah. But well, now rear wheel drive, no performance. I remember back with my Tesla Model S Performance Raven, you used to sit like this, and now you sit like that. Yeah. Doesn't matter. The draggy doesn't lie. Zero to 60. Six ninety one seconds. We'll test it again in the opposite direction just by flooring it completely on the pedal. Maybe that brake was contraindicated with gas. We had that before, I think, with the Neo. Right, exactly. Right, zero to 50 in 3.37 seconds. Yeah, it's fine. Zero to 60, 3.97 seconds. Yeah, it's fine. But they're not exactly record-breaking, are they? No. Color values they may not be, but it's definitely enough. Well, it's just the standard range with 208 kilobau. So if you want more, there's the dual motor, which I think has almost 500 HP or 400, and then there's the performance no. with almost 500 HP. That no. has all been changed once again. Yes, he always goes up open. 
Draggy is currently resetting, then launch. Three, two, one, go. Just press down on the gas pedal and off we go. 20, 50, 70, 90, 100. Now let's see if the values have slightly improved a little bit. Occasionally, it surprisingly bothers the car if, essentially, you hold the brake pedal and then immediately floor the gas pedal. And naturally, we want to check that now with the draggy and ensure it's all completely verified. You can see this here with GPS. That means we went from 0 to 100 in 6.72 seconds. Even here, we didn't reach the factory spec of 6.1, 0 0.50, 3.16, and 0 0.60, 3.81. So with these small improvements, I think probably... The user isn't even going to care a lot about this in their daily, everyday life, right, Stefan? Mm, I don't think so either. You'll still outshine every other traffic light. Oh, really? Of course. We want to measure the interior noise with you at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour for this test. Fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight decibels. These are top values familiar from the Mercedes S-Class. That means Tesla seems well insulated here. We're driving 70. 59, 60 decibels. Just for comparison, that's what a VW ID3 has at 50 kmh and we're going 100. 64, 65 decibels. So I have to say hats off to Tesla, right? Really great values. It has double glazing and it also seems to be well insulated. <laughs> You can really feel it yourself, I think, when driving. Back then, you always had the feeling, remember my Model S, yeah. like the oncoming traffic would rush past your ear. Exactly. And all that's gone, and they did a good job with it. And that's important, because someone who buys a car doesn't want a driving computer, but a car with a driving computer, right? Exactly. We're going to hit the highway, and we always ramp up a bit here with a good 70 mph onto the on-ramp. But that works properly, right? Yes, it keeps the playtime well. Nothing whistles here, nothing squeaks like with the turning circle. Well, just a little bit. Next, we get out here onto the acceleration lane, pass the Cupra over there with ease, and then continue on our journey. Cupra stands for performance, right? Yes. He didn't expect us to drive up like that. And we're already hitting 160 km h. Let's really pick up speed. It's all clear here. And want to break the top speed right away and go over 200 km h here, Stefan? I have to say, that's pretty impressive, right? Yes. In one go, right? 201 is, I believe, the factory spec. 203 is what we achieve in reality. And that, for a Tesla, I think is quite a comfortable cruising speed, right? Absolutely. If the consumption matches accordingly. I knew there'd be a catch once again. What I always truly liked about the Tesla Model 3 wasn't merely just that the crafter here, please make some room for us, but this incredibly large windshield that goes so deep down needs extra attention. You have such a, I think, perfect all-around view, right? Sure, you can sit a little lower, but still continue to move forward slowly. Some people are really bothered by it, because you can see the oncoming driver's belly buttons from there, but you can try to just look somewhere else entirely, right? Do you have something to hide? Just imagine if you still had the joggle wheel, you know? What would happen here? Now let's get a bit sharper. Yes, brakes are fine too. Now we also need to properly adjust the speed here. The new colleague middle shoe is once again a bit too fast, but we'd better get in line properly. Yeah, I have to say, the Tesla does it really well, but what I really can't get used to are these blinkers. No, I believe you. So I think it's a fruit. You need a few weeks for that. I mean, no kidding. It's already partially like, I don't want to exaggerate because that's what the Tesla fanboys do too. They always try to manipulate you somehow, trying to make you believe that you need it, that it's the latest hot stuff, that everyone who doesn't have it has a subpar car, and without it, your experience just won't be the same as others. That's complete nonsense. Car means diversity. Car means that you can choose from various electric cars, and that's what we want to show on the channel so you can find your perfect electric car. If that's the Tesla, well, congratulations. If it's another brand, you can still live with it, right? Yeah. Naturally, you can't simply try to convert anyone you know. So, and I'd say Elon Musk with Tesla, he doesn't put the indicator switches on the steering wheel because it's so insane, but he does it simply to save a lever. Right, a lever costs 1.08 euros times 100,000 vehicles. You know what you save. Yes, 108,000 euros, right? <laughs> Correct. So, and now he isn't producing 108,000, but millions of these cars. It's not just the turn signal lever, it's the gear selector. 
And so it adds up, but that's okay. I mean, I honestly think it's very good that Tesla's stock values are performing quite fine in the current market. I think it's good that it's an up and coming company. And I also think it's good that people are starting to think about, do we still need all of this, right? But with the turn signal lever, it's at least a matter of getting used to it, right? Adjusting to it without a doubt. The Tesla sound system is truly on an entirely new level, right? We just looked at where the spatial sound comes from. Look. There's a speaker up there too, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, cool. That's really awesome. Don't you think so too? Yes. Oh, right. Highs, mids, and lows as well. Terrible. I think there's another sound system with the dual motor where you get just a bit more, more extra punch right now, don't you think? Don't you agree? And what you always get L-wise is a bit of jingling and jangling. Yeah. Sure. With your own interpretation of the song, I think it's great. Oh, do you think that's a Tesla song? Of course. Awesome. So, the blinker and I, right? Not today, no friends. I just changed lanes. The indicator didn't turn oh, off, even though it's set to auto cancel here. Look, now we also have a wonderful view to the back. But he doesn't even notice that we actually don't want to blink anymore, does he? Oh, you know, no idea. Sometimes it's weird. We have activated the Tesla autopilot system and would like to demonstrate the lane change feature, ensuring a seamless lane transition, which enhances the overall safety and convenience of driving. That means you then have the possibility to simply use the right indicator and then with a slight steering movement, he didn't do it now because someone wanted to overtake me on the right. I'm now making a slight steering movement and then he switches. I find it nice and gentle, but still swift. Semi-autonomous keeping the lane and it would have worked from the beginning if the guy here with his A5 Sportback hadn't tried to overtake me on the right from Switzerland. You simply don't do that, of course. The Tesla was completely and extremely confused. Now 80 is coming up. We're at 100. It shows it clearly, but it doesn't seem to adjust the speed, which is quite concerning. That means I have to do it manually, I must say. I'm actually a bit irritated because with an autopilot, I expect that it should at least be able to detect the speed accurately, reliably and consistently, regardless of the situation. He seems to be doing that now. It was a problem for a long time. Traffic sign recognition. That appears to have been mostly resolved Nevertheless, I can also predictively adjust and control the speed. Yes, that would definitely be desirable. Others can do it too. Tesla takes immense sincere pride in genuinely wanting very much to be truly good. Why not just do that? Yeah, somehow he is right here too. It doesn't really seem to have the lane properly marked either. They go out, they come back in. Because now, I think he's back. Well, but he didn't, right? It's sort of all a little bit, you know what I mean? A bit strange, really. Yeah, I don't know what's up with him. Anyway, he's just driving around here, trying to figure things out. So it handles quite impressively indeed, shows all the other road users. So camera systems appear to work really, really quite well there too. Somehow I'm disappointed. Yeah, it definitely could have turned out to be a bit better. Let's think about the travel assist here in the Volkswagen ID series. Think about my old Mercedes EQS, Think about the BMW i7, even with the highway assistant, you know, where I yeah. used to drive and got totally bored up to 135 kilometers h. Yeah. Frankly, if we're being completely honest here, Tesla is still quite far away from that. So we can go here. He wants to pass doing well, but it breaks off again. I don't know, this is all not fluid. This categorically simply isn't making any sense to me at all, honestly. I know the Tesla fanboys will now say, it's all user error. Did you do it wrong? Did you mess up that badly? I can't rule it out. Probably if you drive the Tesla daily, it won't do that anymore. Yeah, okay. That's quite different then. You absolutely know exactly how to deal with him. But I also know from some Tesla drivers that they are somehow annoyed by the autopilot and don't use it anymore. So, what good is it to you if you have a system that should work well, but don't use it? And now think a step further. Enhanced autopilot, which we had back then in the Model S, 3,800 euros with lane change assistant, summon, which didn't even work. And the only thing that still did was to get out of the parking spot. 
and maneuver back and forth for 3.8. And if someone then says, okay, I'll do full self-driving here, which has supposedly been around since 2015, 16, 17 at some point, and has never actually materialized to this day. So fully autonomous driving for over 7,000 euros. I think it's at least somewhat questionable to call it autopilot, isn't it? Questionable, definitely, yes. Let's finally get to the conclusion here with the Tesla Model 3 Highland. And I think Tesla has genuinely taken its already great electric car to an innovative new level. Visually, I like it better and aerodynamically, it's much better overall. You might find that out in the second part during the consumption drive and the charging check. And it's also modernized inside you finally get the feeling that you're not in a moving computer, but rather in a car with a high performance computer controlling it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It has indeed all become very valuable now. With ambient lighting, a bit of fabric, the kind Stefan knows from his couch cushions. That's all great. If only the autopilot didn't constantly get application errors because of me. It was fun and worked properly, then it would actually be a highlight, wouldn't it? Absolutely. The Scottish Highlands would be the main highlight. And then it would probably be in terms of price performance. I mean, it's already, I think, the best electric car you can buy with money right now, right? I think for the given price in this class, you surely get a lot here. Yes. Absolutely. It's one of the premium choice vehicles. Sure, you have to make compromises. You don't have a bike display. You don't have a head-up display. The question is, do you need that? And is yep. it worth the extra cost to you? Yep. You need to put a turn signal there. Yes, definitely. Yes, from my point of view too. Just give us the option. We want to be included. Done. However, to be fair, if we were to have a long distance test and drove this car daily over 5,000 or 10,000 kilometers for about three or four months, we might end up speaking quite differently. I don't really know for sure. I think there's a lot of automaticity involved at some point, that it simply happens on its own, that the thumb just finds its way there by itself. But we have great driving comfort. But we have, finally, I find a car where you can comfortably cover long distances. I have plenty of space here. So if the second video also shows a great consumption and the old one was already pretty good, plus a fast charging performance, then it's definitely a hot candidate. Certainly. Then, by all means, you really should definitely watch it. And with that, we've reached the end of the first part of the review and test drive of the Tesla Model 3 Highland Standard Range. In a few days, the second video with the consumption run and the charging check will follow. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Please check again if you are part of the Einfar Elektrisch community. If not, we'd be truly very happy if you can support us. And then you won't miss the second part. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy and see you soon. Yours, Oli. Hey, Stefan? Well. Why does the bottom horizontal stroke seem to be missing from the E in the Tesla logo? You explained that to me earlier. That's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. This is a hallmark of Tesla and defines their brand. Start.